Hey everyone, so as you can see I'm really going for that r slash May living space look. I bought some New Year Christmas lights kind of thingy. So I'm trying some new things for the videos just to switch it around and see uh, what angle looks better and what setup looks better. So let me know in the comments if you like this kind of setup right here. So anyway, in my last video of this series, I showed you guys how to create your own DIY VPN and told you about some of the advantages of that comparing to commercial VPNs. Now using a VPN, even a DIY one, ain't rocket science, obviously. You just download the configuration file, you download the client application, so for example on Windows, we need to download OpenVPN Connect, then you put the configuration file in the app, connect and voila, now you're in Netherlands or Singapore or whatever. However, sometimes there are use cases where you need to use a VPN for some applications, but not for other ones. So for example, you want to listen to Spotify, which is blocked in your country, and you also want to play an online game at the same time. And sure, you can just connect your VPN system wide and Spotify will play songs just fine, but then the ping in your online game won't be as good as with the normal internet connection. So in this case, you would really prefer to use your VPN for Spotify, but not for Dota 2 or League of Legends or whatever. Or consider the following. You want to share your favorite Linux ISO, for example Ubuntu 2004 LTS with your friends. And the best way to do it is obviously Torrent. But the thing is, your ISP doesn't like torrents at all. He sees torrent traffic, he thinks illegal pirated downloads, right? But you just want to share the free open source software with your friend. So what you want to do in this case is you want to use your VPN connection for the torrent clients but not for the rest of the traffic because you're fine with your ISP connection, for example. And obviously there are many, many more use cases in which you would want to use your VPN for some applications and use your normal internet connection for all the other applications. So while researching for that video, I've been looking for some ways to route some of your traffic through a VPN and it turns out it's super easy on Android, kind of doable on Linux and pretty much impossible on all the other operating systems. On Windows you can do that for IP addresses but not for applications, which is kind of annoying because obviously you don't have a list of all the IP addresses that your application connects to, right? But I think I kind of came up with a good idea on how to do it on all major operating systems and for that we'll need Docker, which runs on macOS, Windows and Linux. The container will still run Linux, but let's not get too technical. So let me try to explain the idea to you in a very simple way. Basically, we will set up a Docker container that contains a proxy. This Docker container will connect to our VPN. And so every time you want to route your application through the VPN, you will connect it to this proxy. It's actually very convenient because none of the applications that I tested have this option of routing all the traffic through a certain interface, but almost all of the applications have this option of connecting to your proxy. And to set up all of that, we're going to be using a Docker container named Arch Deluge VPN. Deluge. 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 Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna say Deluge. I'm sorry, I am not American or English. I have no idea how to pronounce this word. <laughs> And in order to set up all of that, we're going to be using a Docker container named Arch Deluge VPN. This container includes Privacy Proxy and Deluge Torrent Client, and it also supports OpenVPN and WireGuard. And it also has a kill switch, which will prevent the container from connecting to the internet if there is no VPN connection or if your VPN connection has been interrupted. As a matter of fact, the container won't even launch if there is no valid VPN configuration detected. And at this point, you might want to ask, well, why not just use Shadow Socks or a similar proxy on the server itself? But the thing about Shadow Socks and all the other proxies is even though it's very good at circumventing censorship and great firewall, it doesn't really encrypt your traffic. So for that we'll need a VPN. And having a proxy set up locally means that the unencrypted traffic will only travel inside our local network. And then all the traffic that actually does leave your local network will be encrypted because we're using a VPN for the container. So let me show you how to set it up on your machine right after I tell you about our today's sponsor. Linode provides Linux servers in different locations around the world and lets you set up a self-hosted VPN server for just 5 bucks a month. Their servers feature DDoS protection and custom Linux ISOs. They even have Arch Linux and Gen2 if you're into that kind of stuff. And if you also want to get $100 credit for your VPS, check out the link in the description. Now, back to the video. So now we're on my server and the only thing that I did change in my setup since that video came out is switching to WireGuard. WireGuard is a relatively new VPN technology that is now included with the Linux kernel by default and it performs much better than OpenVPN according to the benchmarks on the internet. Moreover, the script that we used in the previous video now has a WireGuard version which is 100% identical to the OpenVPN script. So if you want to switch, all you need to do is rerun the OpenVPN script 
choose the third option, remove OpenVPN, and then run the WireGuard script. It's gonna ask you the same questions that we went through in the last video, and at the end you'll find a configuration file in the home folder right next to the script. I do want to warn you though that if you're running Windows, you might want to stick with OpenVPN. My method of splitting VPN and ISP traffic between applications involves Windows subsystem for Linux. And no matter how hard I tried, I was not able to make it work with WireGuard. Microsoft's version of the Linux kernel does not include WireGuard like newer mainline kernels do, and I just couldn't make it work with WireGuard. That being said, OpenVPN worked just fine, so if you're running Windows, do keep that in mind. I'm gonna start with Windows because so far it's the most difficult OS to set the whole thing up on. Linux is a breeze and Mac is pretty much the same as Windows with a few adjustments. First things first, you'll need to install Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. For that, open the start menu and type turn. Just that, turn. Click on the first result, turn Windows features on or off. Here we need to enable two things, Virtual Machine Platform and Windows Subsystem for Linux. After that we need to restart Windows to complete the installation. Press the Restart Now button. Now we need to update Linux kernel. After Windows starts up, open PowerShell and type wsl-set-default-version2. You're going to get a message with this link. Copy it, open the browser and paste the link in the address bar. After the page loads, click on that link and run the exe file. The installation should be pretty quick and now we're ready to install Docker Desktop. Go to the Docker's website and press download for Windows Stable. By the way, I will leave all the links as well as the text version of this guide in the description. Once the download is finished, launch the installer and after the installation is completed, press on close and log out. After you log back in, you'll see the Docker desktop screen. But before configuring Docker, we need to install a WSL distro, which we're going to use in order to configure our Docker container. Personally, I recommend Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, but you can choose whatever you want, you can install Alpine, Arch, Void, whatever floats your boat. But I'll stick with good old Ubuntu. So once that's installed, click on launch and it's going to open a terminal window with the Linux console. Type in your desired username and the password and after that you should get the bash prompt. Now we need to go back to Docker Desktop, open the settings and untick the send usage statistics. Then go to resources, WSL integration and enable Ubuntu 20.04. Close the Linux terminal window and open it again from the start menu. Now we need to create a few folders for our container. You can place them wherever you want, but I'm going to create a folder named Docker in my main user folder and place all the stuff there. The C drive is mounted to slash mnt slash c folder on this distribution. You can also do the same thing in Windows Explorer, but I personally prefer the command line. Then we need to create a configuration file in the compose folder named docker-compose.yml. Don't worry, I will put an example compose file in the description of the video so that you don't have to type everything yourself. A few important things that you should pay attention to are vpn underscore prov, set it to custom if you're using a self-hosted VPN. There are also some other options such as PIA or Air VPN. Check out the full container documentation if you're interested. VPN underscore client. You can set it to either OpenVPN or WireGuard. Once again, I couldn't make WireGuard work on Windows, so I'm going to stick with OpenVPN. LAN underscore network. If you don't know the IP of your LAN network, open a PowerShell window and type ipconfig. Copy the first three numbers from the IPv4 address window and paste them to the LAN network field in the compose file. Make sure to append a zero as the fourth number and add a slash 24 at the end. In the volumes section, you need to expose the config and downloads folders as well as the local time file to the container. The latter will remain the same in any case, no matter which folders you created, but for the first two, put the path to the folder on your local machine on the left and the path in the container on the right. In this case, the container path for the config folder is slash config and the downloads are located in slash data slash incomplete by default but you can put them anywhere and change the download path in the torrent client later once you're done save the file and quit and the last thing that we need to do before running the container is copy the vpn configuration file into our container folder. So if you're using OpenVPN, you need to create a folder named OpenVPN in the config folder. And if you're using WireGuard, create a folder named WireGuard, and then put your VPN configuration file in the respective folder. And now we're ready to run our container. Type docker-compose up-d. In your case, Docker is going to download the container first, but for me, I already have it on my machine. 
Wait for about 10 seconds and if you did everything correctly, you should be able to see privacy process listening on the port 8118 when you type in docker logs to the huge VPN. If that's not the case, you should go back and verify that you did everything correctly because most of the time the problem is either that you didn't put the path to the folders correctly or maybe your OpenVPN configuration file is missing. So now that we have the container up and running, let's check out the torrent client part first. For that, open up a browser window and go to localhost semicolon 8112. You're going to get a password prompt and the default password here is deluge. You can change it later in the settings if you want. Now as you can see, we do have our IP address in the bottom right corner. But just to be on the safe side, let's download the TorGuard Check My IP Torrent. It's a magnet link, but it doesn't actually download anything. The only thing it does is show you IP address in the torrent status. And as you can see, it shows the same IP address as the Luge, so we're pretty much good to go. And as you can see, I just started downloading Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. And if we go to the Downloads folder in the Explorer, we can actually see the file, which is great. Last thing I want to show you is the Firefox extension called Torrent Control. It lets you add magnet links and torrent files to Deluge very easily using the right-click menu. You just need to specify the IP address and the port, in our case it's localhost and 8112. Very useful, can't recommend enough. Using the proxy in Firefox is very easy. You just go to the settings, type proxy in the search bar, and put in the proxy's address, localhost, port 8118. And now the whole internet thinks we're Netherlands. But Firefox's proxy functionality is a little bit limited. You can only use it for old websites, or alternatively, there is an option for a blacklist. However, there is an extension called Foxy Proxy, which lets you put in a whitelist as well, so that you can maybe try and convince your ISP that you're a normal person who only watches Netflix and goes on Facebook or something. Foxy Proxy also supports regular expressions, which is pretty neat. And as you can see, whoer.net thinks I'm from Germany, whereas google.com shows the IP of my VPS in Netherlands. By the way, if you're concerned about worse ping or download speeds, here's a comparison between the proxy and the WireGuard client connected directly to the VPN. As you can see, the proxy actually has lower ping, which is weird, but there you go, there are no issues with higher latency using that method. And the last thing that I want to show is how to use your proxy in other applications. Let's say you want to listen to Spotify, but alas, some songs just wouldn't play in your country. No problem. Let's go to settings, scroll down to the advanced settings and put in your proxy. And after restarting Spotify, as we can see, the songs start playing just fine, and the rest of the applications will still use your normal internet connection. Unlike on Windows, on Linux the whole process takes less than 5 minutes. Open a terminal, type sudo pacman-s docker or sudo app get install docker, sudo usermod-ag docker username, sudo systemctl enable-now docker. Then create the folders and write the compose file. Arch Linux users will also have to install docker compose and I personally had to restart before I could launch the container. It might not be the case for you but it was for me. I'm gonna be using WireGuard this time around because it actually works, unlike on Windows. I do want to mention though that before writing the container you should edit the WireGuard configuration file and remove that bit. For some reason the container can't parse the config otherwise and will refuse to start. Then save the file, quit, and type docker-compose-up-d. Congratulations, you're done. Now, on macOS, our Docker container is going to be running with slightly worse performance since whereas on Linux it's running natively and on Windows it utilizes a very lightweight virtual machine, on macOS it's a pretty basic VM and that induces a certain performance penalty. On the other hand, you can actually use WireGuard, so that's something. Still, the process is very similar to that on Windows, except you don't need to install Windows subsystem for Linux. First, you need to install Docker Desktop. If you already have the homebrew package manager, you can just type brew cask install docker in the terminal. Otherwise, you can download it from the docker website just like the Windows version. The rest is pretty much the same. Create the folders, write the compose file, copy the WireGuard config, and type docker compose up d in the terminal. And there you go. This is how you use VPN for selected applications on all three major operating systems. So that's gonna be it for this video, and I do want to thank my patrons. Ray Piria, Mitchell Valentino, Devin Merrill, and everyone else supports my channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.